Good afternoon, everybody. This is Paul Ura of the National Weather Service Office here in New Braunfels, Texas for our 2 p.m. Monday, January 15th, a winter weather briefing and webinar. Um, I will tell you that this is our last planned briefing for this event via webinar. Um, we will continue to send out situation reports and obviously provide our information on our website and social media and stuff for the next upcoming several days where it remains mainly a, a cold issue as far as temperatures and wind chills. But um, some important updates. Uh, wind chill warning has expired. I'm sorry, the winter storm warning has expired. Uh, we had to upgrade our winter weather advisory last night around 1 a.m. to a winter storm warning uh, because of uh, the numerous accidents and stuff that uh, folks were uh, letting us know about. Um, a hard freeze warning continues in effect as well as wind chill warnings and advisories, so we'll go over that. Uh, before we go on to the next slide, I will mention that we are recording this as usual. Uh, I will be sending out the slides uh, to everybody, and of course, if you have questions, uh, please go ahead and fill them in or ask them on the questions uh, pullout for GoToWebinar here, and I'll try to get to those questions at the very end. So some of the main points, uh, most if not all the frozen precipitation has ended across the region. I'll show a radar loop here in a second, which does show some very weak radar returns, but they're likely not hitting the ground. Uh, there could be a few slick spots still on roads, um, but for the most part, improvement is likely uh, this afternoon. Uh, as long as the wind is blowing and it's not precipitating outside, a lot of this is already kind of evaporating, not necessarily melting because we're still below freezing in most, in most areas. But uh, literally the wind and the dry air is helping to evaporate a lot of that light glaze that we did have actually on some of the roads and exposed services. Uh, of course, the Arctic cold is going to be staying in place all the way through Wednesday. Uh, again, as mentioned, wind chill advisories and warnings are in effect at least until Tuesday morning. The hard freeze warning is in effect until 10 a.m. Wednesday. Um, there are still a lot of spots, especially out in the hill country, the northern sections of south central Texas, that will probably not get above freezing until probably on Wednesday. So obviously these long periods of below freezing temperatures uh, can really lead to widespread sort of uh, water pipe issues, uh, not only in neighborhoods, but businesses, et cetera. And then finally, a brief warm up on Wednesday and Thursday. Thursday will be the warmest day. We'll probably be approaching some 60s um, across a lot of the region before another Arctic front actually pushes through Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. So we're gonna be right back into the really, really cold air uh, by uh, the end of the week into the weekend. And so I'll talk about that. Uh, current conditions, uh, air temperatures on the left, you can kind of see that, oh, primarily kind of north of Interstate 10, we primarily have temperatures in the upper teens to lower 20s. And then across uh, the Rio Grande Plains and portions of San Antonio and Bear County, still below freezing into the 20s. And really the only areas that are still above freezing are actually right along the Rio Grande uh, into the mid 30s. But for the most part, everybody is below freezing right now. Uh, you factor in wind, and we have single digit wind chills already in port the northern sections of South Central Texas. Everybody else are in the teens and primarily 20s for wind chills. So I'm gonna kind of show you a quick radar loop of these really, really light echoes that are kind of passing by. You can kind of see these waves of this very, very light precipitation. Um, I'll play this again for you. Uh, this is likely some very, very either light snow grains, some ice crystals, something trying to fall, but it, it's not making it to the ground from what we can tell. Uh, you may see a little bit of, of something on a windshield, but for the most part, we, we think the precipitation is primarily done. On the far right here, you can kind of see the satellite imagery. Uh, you can see this is actually snow up in Oklahoma. Uh, there was actually some very light snow uh, that was actually mainly brought in by lake effect, believe it or not, around the Dallas-Fort Worth area and Lake Texoma. Uh, but all of this white here is all the cloud cover. This cloud cover should be pretty much transversing across the state and moving from west to east. So areas out by the Rio Grande are already getting some sun. Uh, we should hopefully start to see some breaks in the clouds across our region late afternoon, but probably it's going to be more like evening time. It's being a little stubborn uh, trying to get out of the region. Okay, so let's go to our current advisories and warnings map. On the left-hand side is our wind chill. Uh, so in this Kind of light gray color this is where we actually have a wind chill warning in effect all the way through tomorrow morning um, down below our wind chill advisories so our criteria for wind chill warning is anything that's below zero 
and our criteria for windshield advisory is anything below 10 degrees. So obviously where we're expecting the below zero windshields that will really kind of kick in later tonight as a kind of reinforcing shot of wind and north wind and colder temperatures kind of comes down. So uh, that'll start to really see probably by evening time when the sun goes down, the winds will kick up and that's really kind of bring in these, these low zero wind chills. Uh, that's the warning in effect. As far as hard freeze warning, you can see the counties that we have under a hard freeze warning. These are primarily counties where we're gonna be getting below 20 degrees or basically the teens. It's not to say that we may have to expand these hard freeze and, and take it all the way to the Rio Grande or Rio Grande Plains. It's gonna be cold. It's gonna be below zero out here. It's just that we're trying to figure out like what are the worst, um, what are the worst areas to kind of get the coldest, but then also how long those areas will actually be below freezing. So we don't have a strict criteria for issuing a hard freeze warning here in this portion of the state. So um, we, we kind of know it when we get to those sort of situations. Right now, we definitely are in that sort of situation because of the, the pipe issues and, and how long the area is going to be below freezing in a lot of these different regions. So again, wind chill, the most dangerous part about this, right, is, is that you can get hypothermia very, very easily with these sort of wind chills and cold temperatures. Uh, and again, the wind chill is expected minus 10 to 10 degrees, basically late tonight uh, into tomorrow morning. Um, I will mention, well, I'll, I'll get to that when I get to Wednesday. Uh, for tomorrow morning, you can kind of see these are the air temperatures. We're expecting low teens. Not to say we can't get some single digits in there, but the wind is going to be up pretty much all night. So uh, we still think two, uh, Wednesday morning is actually going to be the, the coldest air temperature morning, but tonight is likely going to be the uh, the start of the real, real, two really, really cold nights. So teens and low 20s across much of South Central Texas. Tomorrow warm up, about half of the region, basically areas south of, of Interstate 10 will likely climb above freezing. Areas to the north of Interstate 10, including the Austin Metro area, the Hill Country, the northern parts of Hill Country may stay below freezing uh, all day tomorrow as well. As we get into Wednesday, again, Wednesday morning, uh, may be actually our coldest temperatures because the wind is going to drop off and clear skies. That will allow for really, really good radiational cooling. So the valleys um, where the cold air tends to sink will likely be our coldest uh, areas on Wednesday morning. Good news again, and this has been well advertised, uh, the warm-up will start on Wednesday to where everybody should get above freezing uh, for the most part. Okay, let's talk about wind chill. So tonight, um, the, the, on the left here is the windshield map for today. Now, we aren't close to some of these below zero windshields yet. Uh, this map is actually drawn going all the way up to midnight. So again, like I said, as soon as the sun goes down, winds are going to kick up, gust well over probably 20 miles per hour by late this evening. And so that's what's going to bring the wind chills into these levels, into single digits, and then also below zero. Uh, by far, tomorrow morning, Tuesday a.m. is where we're going to have probably a pretty large area of widespread wind chills below zero across the northern half of the region. Um, below that, again, kind of wind chill advisory criteria were single digits. So it's going to be cold everywhere. Everybody needs to, to, to do the appropriate precautions. Um, so, so yeah, there's going to be some of our coldest temperatures that we've obviously seen um, in a while. Again, to advertise our forecast points database website, again, Download this website or actually just save it onto your browser. You can use the QR code to download it onto your phone. Uh, on the map, the default will tend to be up in Minnesota because that's where this is developed. Uh, zoom into Texas, zoom into your region, click on the map, and then you can actually bookmark that moving forward. Hourly temperatures, hourly wind speeds, directions, rainfall, all of that. So this goes right into our forecast database. This is what populates all of our forecast information. But um, it's very well put together. They have these nice graphs, et cetera. So moving forward for any sort of day, any sort of weather event, this is the website to, to make sure you're getting your forecast information from. Again, wrapping it up, uh, most of all the precipitation has ended. We really shouldn't have much issue from that moving forward. Uh, obviously, um, even just driving to work here over the last couple of hours, there were some, I would describe it, they look like kind of wet spots on a couple of the roads. I think those were probably still some ice. So again, the areas that aren't getting good wind flow, the areas that are being a little bit protected from the wind, 
it may take a little bit longer for some of that ice to actually uh, evaporate off. So everybody should still use a caution if driving around uh, this afternoon and this evening. The Arctic air again is in place. The warnings are up again for hard freeze warnings and the wind chills. So just be aware of that. Uh, these long periods of freezing temperatures are not very common. And so when we do get into these sort of events, the, the water issues and the water pipe burstings uh, really kind of start to ramp up. And again, brief warm up uh, on Wednesday and Thursday, especially on Thursday, but um, another Arctic blast is, is gonna be coming. Now, the good news about this one is that the Arctic air appears to be shifting more east as opposed to south. So I think we're gonna get some, still too early to tell how cold, and that's gonna be really important because the models are pushing in a pretty decent uh, wave coming across at the end of next weekend uh, that would be bringing some rain. So obviously we don't want the cold air to still be around if there's a good shot of rain coming. So hopefully that the timing will work out to where we'll just get some cold rain, but obviously watching the forecast for this upcoming week is gonna be important to kind of know what's gonna be happening uh, during next weekend. Protecting the people, the pets, the pipes and the plants, obviously all of this should have already been done days ago before this event, but if you need to have some last minute preparations, right now is the time to do it. QR code, great winter graphics, that's where I've been taking some of these graphics that I've been showing every day for the preparedness stuff and a great website to, to again, keep bookmarked. Again, we don't anticipate a next briefing. Uh, we're gonna be switching all over to our daily situation reports until this event is done. But obviously our website is a great place to go for additional information, our social media sites, as well as that forecast points database website. So that's all I had for today. If you have any questions, uh, nothing has come across right this second. Okay, uh, Assembly, uh, do you have plans to release a report with accumulation totals? If not, what is the best resource to report that information? We're having a hard time right now finding accumulation, to be honest. The precipitation that happened was very, very light. Um, we don't have any pictures. We have some pictures of like some light, like on the grasses and on some of the roads, but as far as official measurements, um, we have not actually seen any yet. We're gonna go back on some of our sensors to see if some of the freezing rain sensors actually picked up enough to register. But as of right now, everything appeared to be way less than a 10th of an inch, because otherwise we would have at least some ruler measurements from some folks with accumulation. So. It was cold enough that just that light, light blaze of freezing drizzle and stuff was enough to cause all the multiple accidents. So um, if that's the case, we'll be putting out some local storm reports that actually have some ice totals. But as of right now, it's, it's, it's a hard thing to measure right now because it, just, it was that light. Uh, traffic impact in New Braunfels, Shirts, and Cibolo. Um, you're gonna kind of have to watch um, Google Maps to kind of see where maybe some travel issues are. Um, you know, so much of road conditions for us are kind of out of our control, right? It depends on if the roads have been treated and that then goes to, deck, to TxDOT. So I would suggest that if you're worried about the road conditions and particularly reach out with, to your local TxDOT jurisdictional office and find out where they are or where they have been treating. Um, I've been kind of using Google Maps to kind of see where some of the hot spots were as far as accidents and everything else. And I think moving forward, I think that's still a really, really good bet because there's no way for me to tell exactly what roads are good right now and what roads are bad because uh, me driving in today pretty much all the roads were pretty much dry but i know there are some some still some slick spots out there uh, asked, uh someone was asking about slack and our nws chat page yes uh we've been getting all those uh, products on there as well as getting some updates so uh, that is always going to be a great place to get your communication from and conditions and that's also a great place where people have been posting road conditions as well on our Slack page directly from the jurisdiction. So, um, yes. Still going through some of the questions, stand by. Uh, will any accumulation around the region lift this evening or should we expect it to remain into tomorrow morning? No, pretty much everything is ending right now. Again, there's some light stuff on radar, but I don't even think it's hitting the ground. So for the most part across our region, I can't talk about other parts of the, of the state and everything else. I'm talking about South Central Texas. Uh, we are pretty much um, 
good to go with, with no more significant uh, precipitation at all. Uh, we are trying to determine if we issue a delayed start to school at 10 a.m., what will the wind chills be at 10 a.m.? Those wind chills at 10 a.m. may may be increasing a little bit. That's where that forecast points database, wherever your jurisdiction is, go onto that forecast points database, click on your city or your neighborhood, and you can tell exactly hour by hour what we are forecasting for our wind chills. Again, the, the coldest wind chills will be right around dawn. Um, and then as temperatures start to rebound just a bit, uh, we'll probably start to see some of those wind chills warm a bit. But um, the coldest wind chills will likely probably be overnight into those pre-dawn and dawn hours. But double check on that forecast points database for your exact location. All uh, right, someone mentioning drivetexas.org is a good work, uh, resource as well. You're, you're correct for the roads. Uh, Bastrop mentioning that roads are mostly completely white in Bastrop right now. It's been there since before sunrise. Yeah, some areas did get a little bit of a training effect with some of those light precipitation things kind of moving across. So, um, so right, some areas were, were hit a little bit worse than others as far as the amount of uh, freezing drizzle, even like some sleet, and there was even some some very very snow, uh, light like snow grains that were actually kind of falling in some regions. So, um, right, it's not going to get really above freezing anywhere, uh, especially in those uh, hardest hit areas. So everybody's going to have to remain cautious. Uh, unfortunately, I know what happens that as soon as some of the stuff gets dropped, uh, people just rush out because they think everything is clear and they are not as careful driving uh, during these conditions. Uh, where can I find the Slack page? So um, to describe what Slack is, uh, we have had a NWS chat room for our core partners for years, and that recently moved over to Slack. So um, Veronica, if you're interested, um, go ahead and email me directly or email the, the alert account that you see, this website here, the sr alert. This is a partner sort of chat room that we have for media, emergency managers, and the National Weather Service. General public is not allowed. Uh, on that sort of Slack platform, but uh, we can discuss uh, if you would like. I think I got to most of the questions. Like I said, uh, be very, very cautious of travel still, even though the precipitation has ended with this cold, a lot of the stuff is gonna have to evaporate uh, before it actually melts, which when the wind kicks up, that helps, but some protected areas, some protected roads, less traveled roads uh, may still be kind of be hampered by some sort of uh, light glaze and light ice uh, across those roads. So be very, very careful. I do not see any of the questions coming in, so I'll we'll give it about five or 10 more seconds before I wrap everything up. So again, we'll um, go ahead and process the video for this recording. I'll send that out via a YouTube link here, uh, hopefully within the hour, as well as the slides that you guys can share with your jurisdictions if there were folks uh, that were not on the webinar this afternoon. So again, uh, thank you for everybody that did attend these webinars over the last four days. Like I said, we're going to go right toward just our daily situation reports to, to wind this uh, event down. Um, and then um, just continue to look at the forecast. And thank you again for your attendance during these webinars. Thanks so much.